Today I want to talk to you about SVG files. What is an SVG file? You might be asking yourself. It's a scalable vector graphic. What does that even mean? Good question. So it means that it is a file that you can upload to a software like Cricut Design Space and it makes your image ready to cut. You don't have to clean it up and fix anything or adjust it. It's just ready for you to cut. And if it has multiple colors in it, those colors are already going to be on their own separate layers. So everything is ready for you to go. There's actual data inside an SVG file. And that's why you can't just grab it off of Google and upload it. it you have to download an actual file from someplace. Um, if you are just grabbing something off of Google, most likely it's an image. That's a whole different video. You can look for my video on how to clean up an image. I might link that in the description of this video. So the main reason for making this video is I had a video about SVG files and a lot of people commented that the sound was kind of quiet. I made it earlier on in my whole making video career. So it's time for an upgrade. Okay, so first off, let's go look on my website, shodmosh.com. If you typed in on the search bar SVG, one of the blogs you will find is my um, one where I go over SVG files. What are they? Where do I get them? So this is some of the information I already told you, but if you want to read more, please go here and read through all of this. But then here's where the fun stuff comes in. I list for you different websites where you can get free SVGs. Now some of them like Craft House SVG, they have free ones, but they also sell some too. But if you want to buy them, look at this. Here's my code. You can save 10%. So any place that I have a shopping code for, I'll give you a link to there or the, give you the code too. Um, I really like sites that sell SVGs and have free ones. Here's why. You can go and get their free one to check out like, okay, they make good quality SVGs. So now you feel more comfortable buying. And when you buy one, it's probably only a buck or two. So it's not like it's gonna break the bank, but it's kind of like when you go to the grocery store and they give you a free sample of something. If you take the free sample, you're like, oh, that's good. I will now buy whatever it was you were sampling. Okay, so here's one of the sites that I go to often. And I'm just gonna grab, let's use this unicorn. So when I click on the unicorn, it's gonna bring me to the page to actually download the file. It gives me more information. It's gonna tell me here are the different file formats that I'm gonna get. Okay, it says I have to log in to download. So one moment while I log into my account. And if you're gonna make an account here, I think it's a really good idea um, because then you can come back again and again and again and it saves in memory what your um, downloads were and you know, then you can go back and re-download them. So you get a new computer and you're like, oh, I lost all my SVGs. You can go back and re-download them. Okay, so this video might be really boring if you can't see me log in. Let's try again. Oh, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha. It found me. Okay, let's go with free SVG files. And you know, some bloggers might cut out some of this stuff, but I keep it in there because I'm a real person. I'm not some fancy schmancy person out there. I'm a real person just like you. So I want you to see the hiccups that I run into. Okay. Now that I'm logged in, I see the download now button. When I click that download button, it's going to put the file in my downloads folder. 
and you can kind of see something happened over here. Okay. But if I click on my little file folder and I go to downloads, you're going to see right there is my enchanted unicorn folder. Okay, so let's talk about this folder that I found in my downloads. You can see right here, it's got a big Z on it. And at the end of the file name it says .zip. That means this folder is a zip folder. This is not the folder you want to upload to Design Space. Let me re say that again. This is not the file folder you want to upload to Design Space. If you try to do that, you're going to get an error that says unsupported file. The zip file is kind of like, you know when you order something from Amazon and it gets shipped to your house? It has to come in a box that you need something to transport it to your house. Think of the zip folder as your Amazon box. It's arriving. But the thing you want is inside this box. So now you gotta get inside this box or zip folder. So every computer and operating system is gonna be slightly different. So you might have to Google how to unzip folder on Mac, because I don't have a Mac. I have an HP, it's a Windows system. I did do a video about how to unzip and use um, SVG files on an iPad. It'll be linked in this description. So for me, what I do is I click on the image or the folder, and then I go right click with my mouse. And when I right click, I get all these choices. See this one that says ZZip? Um, I've also seen it say um, unzip. Okay, but what it says here is I can extract the files. So if I do extract files, it's going to ask me where to put them. I'm just going to say ex extract files here. And now it opened up a normal just folder, okay? That's the extracted files. Okay, so now we're going to click on this and go inside here. All right, I have four different file types. This one is a DXF. See where it says DXF on the end? There are different cutting um, softwares out there that use DXF. Um, ESP, I can't remember the type that uses that. Here is where most people go wrong. They go, oh, that's the one with the pretty unicorn, and they upload this one. Wrong answer. This is a JPEG, or, or I'm sorry, this is a PNG file. Um, this is where if you upload this, you're gonna have to remove all the white. Well, the whole reason we're uploading and using an SVG file is because we want it all ready to cut. So this one that says SVG at the end of it is the actual file you want to use. Yes, I know it says SVG in here, but that's just the name of the file. You want the file type. And if you hover on this one, it says item type PNG file, where this one says Microsoft Edge. Okay, so it's either going to say .svg or it's going to have an icon that looks like your internet browser icon. So Microsoft, I've also seen HTML. All right, so look for this one. Do not use the one that shows the picture of what you actually want to use. This is where most people get confused with SVGs. So now let's go into design space because now we have that SVG file extracted from the zip folder. So now we can hit upload and we can say upload images and we can browse and we can tell design space, come on, keep up with us. Now I'm going to go to my downloads folder and not the zip one, but just the regular old file folder. 
go inside there and now click on this one that's the actual SVG okay this is an important screen if you ask me see how I uploaded and went straight to save this as a cut image it didn't ask me is this a simple image or a moderately complex or a very complex image why is that because it's an SVG file so there's your first clue. If you upload this and you get the screen that says, is this image simple, moderately complex, or complex? You didn't upload an SVG, you uploaded an image. And if you've ever uploaded an image, you know that the next step it's gonna take you through is to remove the background. And then after that, it's gonna say, do you wanna save this as a cut image or a print then cut? Okay, so those are all clues. If you get all those options, it's not an SVG. This is a true SVG because it just uploaded and boom, went straight to save as cut image. I have no choices to make because it's already ready to go. So now I can click, well first I could change the name up here if I want to change it. Um, and then I can go upload. And there it is in my recent uploads. So now when I insert this image into design space, It's all ready to cut perfectly. So let's try finding one that is um, an image that has a bunch of layers on it. Because I really want you to see that when you're using a true SVG file, it comes in layered. Oh, these are going to be some good ones. Um, now the hard part is picking oh let's do beach babe I like that one yeah I know I should change my password okay I'm gonna click on beach babe okay so now let's look at this image and you'll see it's got three colors in it the yellow the blue and this gray and now I'm going to download that image and it drops down here but I can also come this way back to my downloads and now I'll see Beach Babe in a zip folder so I'm going to right click and extract files here okay so there's the files I want so back to design space upload upload image browse and beach babe and again we want the one that's got this icon not the one with the pretty picture the one that says dot svg it is a html document and it's straight to save as cut image okay and now I go upload and click on it and insert that image. I want you to notice something. This came in in color. So each one of those elements came in fully colored in the colors that were assigned to them. That is because I used an SVG. So over here, um, you can see the different layers. And this one, they do have each little line as its own layer. So personally, what I would do is ungroup these. And then I would um, take all of the stuff that's blue and attach it. Oops, sorry. They were grouped, so I have to ungroup them first. Ungroup. There we go. So I would take everything that's blue and attach that and then take everything that's in this gray and attach that. And why do I do that? Because then when I hit make it, let's hit make it and see what happens. Oh my gosh, design space is being slow. 
it keeps all the letters right together. So now if I was cutting this to put on a, a beach bag, I would cut all of these and weed them. And um, then I would probably place the word beach and press that onto my bag first. And then that would allow me to better place the sun up here on the top and then put the word babe underneath. But you see, they were already broken into colors because of it being a layered SVG. So I hope this helps you to understand the importance of using an SVG over just uploading an image. And if you have any questions about you using an SVG file, just drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you. Um, if you found this helpful or if you love my list of where to get free SVG files on my website, make sure you give this a thumbs up and tell somebody else about it. They need to know about where they can get free SVGs. And always make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you get notified as soon as I post a new video like this one. Have a great day.